Praise God, hallelujah, praise God. This is Keith English, I'm back with a new video. Thank you all who's on here. Like and subscribe to this channel. As I always tell you, the motive is not about gaining subscribers, monetization, views, or nothing, but it is to lead God's people to salvation and them that are lost by allowing them to hear a sound doctrine that's gonna lead them to salvation. Now today's topic that we're gonna talk about, this is a more sensitive topic where many people got their own different views about this. But as I always tell you, it's about what the what does the Bible say? Not what we think or what we may have heard from other people or grew up in churches hearing and all that. What does the Bible actually say? And today's topic, like I told you, it is divorce and remarriage. What does the Bible say about divorce and remarry? Is a person allowed to get remarried after a marriage might not work out or any? All the answers is in the Bible, and this is what we're going to go over today. Y'all stay tuned. English. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Again, this topic, what we're going to talk about is divorce and remarriage. Now, we done heard many different views from this, but there's an actual view. That's right, an actual view, which is the truth. What does the Bible truly say about this? Because this is a topic where it's easy to get into your feelings. The flesh gets involved. And we got to understand, it doesn't matter how our flesh feels, how our feelings are, but it's about strictly what the Word of God says. Again, Jesus said that heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words should remain. So whatever his word says, that's what stands. It ain't about that. So we're going to talk about what does the Bible actually say about divorce and marriage? Is it if you walk into a marriage and it don't work out and I can just go find another wife or another husband? Is it okay? Does it work like it in the word of God? Well, first, let me put it like this to you, brothers and sisters. We have to first understand what a covenant is. Because marriage is a covenant. And a covenant is an agreement that only death is supposed to break. Which means that you are to be with that person all the way to death. So, understand that the old covenant, for example, Jesus came, the one, the whole purpose why he had to die so he could fulfill the old covenant in order for us to walk into the new covenant. That's the, one of the main reasons why he had to die, okay? Because death is only to break the covenant. So this is why this marriage thing is really serious. You have to know what you're getting into, know who you're marrying, know that you have to be equally yoked, and know if this person that you're wanting to marry, are they truly willing to serve God with you? That's for you to know. Now, I'm going to come out of Scripture, and we're going to read Deuteronomy 24, verses 1 through 3. Let's read what it says. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he had found some unrighteous uncleanness in her, then let him write a, her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her and write her a bill of divorcement and giveth her in the hand and in her hand and sendeth her out of his house. Or if the latter husband died, which took her to be his wife. So understand this, that Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 3, this is the old covenant order for marriage. This does not apply to us today. Because some people will take scripture and all that and run with this, and they'll under, misuse the context of it. And I'm going to show you according to scripture how Deuteronomy 24, 1-3 does not apply to us today. Because again, this is the old covenant order for marriage. 
But when Jesus came, he established a new covenant order for marriage. And it's all according to Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 through 32. Again, I repeat, Matthew chapter 5, verses 31 through 32. Jesus said, it had been said. So again, hold on. Remember what we just read from Deuteronomy 24, 1 through 3. And again, Jesus is saying right here, it had been said. It had been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let her give her a written of divorcement. Does this not sound just like what we just read in Deuteronomy 24? Does this not sound the same? Third verse 32, but I say unto you. Now again, you see he's saying, but I say unto you. He at first said it had been said. Yeah, it was once said. It was once done this way. But now I'm here, but I, now I'm establishing something new now. It's pretty much what Jesus is saying. When he says, but I say unto you, you heard how it was during that time, but I'm here now. Now I'm doing something. Now I'm establishing something new. That whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery, and whosoever shall marry her that is divorced committed adultery. Now, I'm going to make it more brief and give deep understanding of this because this is a scripture that commonly gets misused a lot because, again, one thing we have to learn from, brothers and sisters, is that never just take one part of scripture or one scripture and just run with it. Never because of what that does, at least a false doctrine and at least a false interpretation of scripture. Sound doctrine, it always comes with a scripture that backs up another scripture. According to what it shares with us in Isaiah, line upon line, precept must be upon precept. A little here, a little there, a little here, and a little there. Now understand this, that a lot of people try to use that part where it says saving for the cause of fornication. They say, they take it and run with it and say that person get remarried. But no, that is not what it's saying at all. What Jesus is saying, he is saying that a man is only allowed to divorce his wife for the cause of fornication. Meaning that if she's been unfaithful. But he's not saying that a person can get remarried. And we're going to read further in because why he said except for fornication because the... In Deuteronomy, first, let me go back to Deuteronomy 24 before I go further. They was able to divorce their wives for any cause. They was able to, they didn't have to have, be, they didn't have to be unfaithful. None of it. If the man just didn't want to beat her no more, he just, it would have been final. He was able to. But that's why Jesus is saying, don't, you know, accept for the cause of fornication because the Pharisees came to Jesus one time. The Pharisees came to him trying to tempt him, asking him, can a man divorce his wife for any cause? And that's why he said except, which we're going to go deeper into, but let me go with the other scripture that backs it up. Now, we're going to go to Matthew. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 19. We're going to read, start off with verse 7, and we're going to read all the way to verse 9. And then he said, They say unto him, Why did Moses, why did Moses then commend to give a written of divorcement to put her away. Verse 8, he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and should marry another, committed adultery. And whosoever married her, which is put away, do it commit adultery. So again, also if you a person, you ain't never been married before, but you're married to somebody who is who has been married before, whose spouse is still alive, well guess what? You're living in adultery and God is calling you to repentance. Let's go to Mark chapter 10, verse 11. Mark chapter 10, verse 11. And this is what he said. And unto and he said unto them, Whosoever should put away his wife and marry another committed adultery against her. And if 
a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committed adultery. So you see how all the scriptures are saying the same thing. Again, we can start at verse 1 just so I can give y'all more of a brief understanding. And he arose from thence and cometh into the coast of Judea by the farther side of Jordan. And the people resorted to him again as he was wont. He taught them again. And the Pharisees to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. So again, the Pharisees came to Jesus, tempting him by saying, Is it for a man to divorce his wife? And he said to them, What did Moses command you? And they said, which again, they referring back to Deuteronomy 24 that we read earlier. Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement to put her away. And Jesus answered and said unto them, for the hardness of your heart, he wrote, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made the male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and leave to his wife. And they twin shall be one flesh. So they are no more twin, but one flesh. So Jesus pretty much telling them, yes, Moses, he wrote that because the hardness of your hearts. That's why there's a scripture that even says in Ephesians, love your, love your wives as Christ of the church and be not bitterness towards them. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter towards them. Because the hardness of their hearts, that's why Moses allowed them to write it. But Jesus said, but from the, from the beginning, it was not so. It was not sold for divorce because God hates divorce according to Mike Malachi, Malachi 2.16. He hates divorce because divorce is not in his plan ever, but he allows it to a certain extent because of the cause through fornication now. Back then, according to Deuteronomy 24, they was able to divorce their wives for any cause, but that's why Jesus now said, only let a man divorce his wife only for the cause of fornication. So now we got a clear understanding, dear brothers, when we see scriptures that says except for fornication, that's not saying they can get remarried. That's just saying that they are not they're just saying that they are allowed to divorce their spouse for the cause of being unfaithful. But they're not to be married. And then we go to Luke 16, 18. It says, whosoever put away his wife and marry another committed adultery, and whosoever married her that is put away from her husband commits adultery. So again, you marry someone, your first spouse is still alive, and you married someone else, you're living in adultery. God is calling you to repentance. It's not by coincidence you came across this video. God loves you, and he wants you to repent. And also, if you a person, you ain't never been married ever. But you married to somebody who's been married before. Guess what? You're still living in adultery. Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. Guess what? That was adultery. And I thank God that they did get a divorce. That was not a pleasing marriage. That's right. I said it too. That was not a pleasing marriage in the eyes of God. And Kanye is to remain single. And Kim is to remain single. She's been married three times. And all three of her spouses are still alive. Her very first spouse is still alive. It's adultery. It's not about feelings, y'all. Okay, it's about truth that's going to save you. The truth shall only set you free. Now let's go to Romans. We're going to talk about, again, how dangerous adultery is too. We're going to go to Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. And we're going to read from 7, 1, 2, 3. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which have an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from her, the law of her husband. So verse 2 is saying this. I'm going to break it down as I go. Verse 2 is saying that a woman is bound to the law, meaning that she's bound as being married to her husband. She belongs to her husband, 
as long as he is alive. But if the husband be dead, if the husband's dead, it don't say if he's still alive, it don't say if things didn't work out between them. If he's dead, no longer living, she's loose. She is free from the law of her husband. She's free from that marriage. So then, verse 3, so then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. So you see, let me let me write it back. Verse 3, I'm going to write it back for you. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man. If her, while her husband's alive and she's married to another man, what does the Bible say? She shall be called an adulteress. So if her she her husband is still alive, and now she's they don't have to be together. But if she's a if he's alive and she's married to another man, she's called an adulteress in the eyes of God. Again, we gotta remember what a covenant is. A covenant is not to be broken until death. So, but if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And we're going to read from verse 10, where it talks about this divorce. And unto the, the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. So Paul's making it clear, because remember, throughout this, throughout this, God did allow Paul to write his own thoughts. But Paul's speaking specifically here. That this is not his own thought. This is strictly the Lord commanding him to say this now. And he says this. And unto the married I command yet not I but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Because again marriage is never in God's plan. God hates divorce but again he allows it to an extent. But and if she depart. Let her remain unmarried. So you see what happens if you do divorce your spouse. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. So anybody who divorced her or is on the verge of divorcing their spouse, you ought to remain unmarried. Or if you want to be married, you ought to reconcile back with them. You are to reconcile back with your spouse. Let's skip to verse 39 of the same chapter, 1 Corinthians 7, 39. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. So a woman is only allowed, you as a person, you're only allowed to be remarried as if your first spouse dies. If you divorce your first spouse, y'all decide y'all don't want to be together no more. Y'all are to remain unsingle, to y'all to remain single or to be reconciled with one another. And understand how dangerous adultery is. We're gonna go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, okay? Again, this is not to scare nobody, but it's to leap, bring convict you, to bring you to repentance, because that's how much God loves you. He don't want you to die and go to hell. We're gonna go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and I'm going to start from verse 16 all the way to verse 26. And it says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye should not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery is the first thing he mentioned. Adultery. Now understand this. Why you think it's meant adultery is the first mention? Because God already knew how big adultery was going to be running. 
There's so many people getting divorced and remarried, especially in the church, like it's nothing. Pastors be allowing it. They're not telling people what the Bible says. They're just allowing it. And that's why God's held holding people accountable for that. But adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. Again, you see what it says? Adulterers will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm going to read the rest. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. So you see in Galatians, it says adulterers is one of the works of the flesh that will lead to eternal destruction. People that's divorced and remarried. Adultery is not just you're cheating on your spouse by sleeping with someone while you're married. But also being divorced and remarried is adultery as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 10. And it says this. Know ye not that the unrighteous should not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators nor adulterers nor adulterers. Nor effeminate. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. If you are living in adultery, if you are divorced and remarried, you are on the verge of hellfire. And God is calling you to repentance so that you won't enter hell. I understand you might have been through situations where your ex-husband used to beat you. Someone said, hey, but brother, my, I have an ex husband he used to beat me. What was I supposed to do? You had to stay in the marriage, but you're not allowed to be remarried, my dear sister. According to what the Bible says, we're going to go to Hebrews 13 and 4. Hebrews 13 and 4, it says, marriage is honorable in all. And the bed undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. Again, as the word says, if you are living in adultery, divorced or remarried, and your first spouse is still alive, you are on the verge of being judged by God and thrown into hell. You don't have to do it. The only price that you need to do is repent. And what is repentance? It means to turn away completely. According to Proverbs 28 and 13, you have to forsake that marriage. I know it's hard. I'm not going to sit here and say that's something easy to do. But you have a choice. Are you going to choose God? Or are you going to choose your desires? Don't be one of them people with what it says in 1 Timothy when it says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their, their own lusts. Which means that there will come a time when people they'll pick their own desires and they won't follow God's word no more. And then instead, they'll look for teachers and preachers that's going to tell them things they want to hear. Don't be one of them people, please. I beg you don't. Hell is real. Hell is real. And the Bible says adulterers will have their, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will see eternal destruction if they don't repent from their adultery. I tell y'all this because I love you. I'm not saying this to scare any of you. I love you dearly. That's why I'm telling you the truth according to what the Bible says. If I don't tell you what the Bible says, then hey, woe be unto me. If I'm speaking my own thoughts, you can throw darts at me. But if I'm speaking accurately what this book says, you say you believe in God, right? What Jesus said, 
Why call me Lord if you do not which I ask of you? If I speak what this book says, it's not me you get mad at, but I love you. I love you. I don't want you to, to die in sin. This is Keith English. I'll see y'all next time. I love y'all.